Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, we're doing some more car repair. I've gotta put this water pump on my 1999 S10 pickup. The other day when I was changing my oil, I noticed there was some antifreeze leaking from the weep hole on the back of this water pump. So it won't be long before this one goes out. So we're gonna go ahead and change it before it goes out and leaves us stranded along the side of the road. I'll start by removing the upper radiator shroud with a 10 millimeter socket. There's seven bolts in all that hold the upper shroud on. There's three on the top and two on the sides. A long extension makes the ones on the sides really easy to get to. Now with all the bolts removed, I should be able to get this shroud out of the way. You gotta be a little bit careful with your AC hoses. You don't wanna stress them too bad, so be a little careful. And there's our shroud. So it seems I've already run into my first little complication. Not really a big deal, but I don't have a big enough wrench to remove the fan. There's a really large nut on the fan that you need to remove in order to be able to pull the fan off. So, it's off to buy a wrench. Now I'm back from the store. We got a big crescent wrench. We can get on that nut. If you use a screwdriver wedged in between the bolts on there to hold the pulley from turning, you should be able to break that fan free. It's on there pretty good. This has proven to be a little tricky. It's really tight. Apparently, they make a tool for an air hammer. <sighs> that you can use for this, and that sure would be nice to have. So we'll resort to one of my favorite tools. We got it. That's why this is one of my favorite tools. It really is a handy hammer. There's our fan. And before I take the serpentine belt off, I'm gonna break these bolts loose that hold the pulley on. These aren't super tight, but it's easier to do while there's a little bit of tension on there from the belt. Now we can remove our serpentine belt. Make sure you check your belt too while it's off. If it's got cracks in there, it'd be a good time to replace it. This one looks fine, so I'm gonna reuse it. Now I can take those bolts out and remove that pulley. All right, now we can take our hoses off, squeeze in those spring clamps, and sliding them back out of the way. And this is where it's gonna get a little messy. I've got a catch pan underneath the hose. Sometimes you gotta persuade it a little bit with a screwdriver, because those hoses get stuck on there really good. Just don't damage the hose. There we go. Try to catch as much in the pan. Now 
I'll do the same with our upper hose. Make sure you have plenty of rags on hand. Now with a 14 millimeter, we can unbolt the water pump. There's still one hose attached, but I'll pull that off when I get the pump out. Now these lower bolts, it's my understanding, goes into the water jacket of the engine. So you need to use thread sealer when we put them back on. I'm gonna remove this idler pulley because it just seems to be right in the way. There. Hey, now we can see what's going on. There we go. So if we look at the pump, right here is the weep hole, and you can see all that antifreeze around there. As the pump starts to wear out, it starts to leak, and that's an indicator that the pump's going bad. Now some of this over here could be from me taking it apart, but all that antifreeze around that weep hole, that's from the pump itself, and that's how I noticed I needed to change it. Now I can start reassembling it. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have all the old gasket material off of there. And I'll start by wiping it all down with a rag so I can really see what's down there. Then I'll use a gasket scraper to scrape off any old gasket material. You can use your finger to feel around the gasket surface just to make sure you got everything. If you feel anything on there, go ahead and scrape it off. Take the time to do it. I'm gonna get in there with a flashlight too just so I can really see. Make sure everything's clean. If it's not clean, you're not gonna get a good seal. And I don't wanna have to take this all back apart once I get it together because it's leaking. All right, now I'm ready to put the new pump back on. I've got it all ready to go. I put some high temperature Permatex on the base of the pump and also on the gasket and I slip the gasket on. I've also got some high temperature thread sealer on the bolts. And I've put the bolts in the holes on the water pump to kind of keep the gaskets in place. I've seen that's where people have some trouble when they go to reassemble it, the gasket moves and they don't realize it and then tighten it down and then of course it's gonna leak. So I'm gonna try leaving the bolts in there like that to help keep the gasket lined up. So let's just slap it on. I'm gonna be really careful so I don't lose the bolts and the gaskets and then have a big problem. I'll just snug the bolts down by hand first. And we'll just give it a quick visual inspection and just to see if we can see maybe if the gasket moved. Make sure it's really in there. And it looks good. And let's tighten it down. Reconnect our hoses. Now bring the spring clamps back down to about where they were. We got all our hoses in place, and we can put our fan back on. And I'll just snug these down by hand. We'll be able to get a lot tighter once we have the belt on. Okay, now our belt. Make sure when you take this off, that you know exactly how it needs to go back on. Sometimes these serpentine belt systems are kind of weird. They route the belt in a weird way and you really think it went one way but it 
goes the complete opposite way. So really make sure you pay attention. Once you get it started, you can you can spin the fan, and that cranks it on pretty quick. Now I'll fill up the radiator. We'll start it up and check for leaks. After you fill the radiator, start the truck, crank up your heat, and blast the fan. This is gonna really help it get circulating once that thermostat opens. And you need to let the truck run until the thermostat opens and you have really hot heat coming out. As it's running, the level in the radiator is gonna drop. So just fill it up as necessary. Once it's up to temperature, we can replace the radiator cap and let the system build up pressure. This is where you'll really find out if there's any leaks. Let us use a really good flashlight to peek down in there and try to see if I can see anything leaking. Everything looks good so far. Since everything's up to temperature, now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the radiator shroud and then we're gonna take it for a spin. I really like these magnetic tool trays for jobs like this. You can put all your bolts in there and it holds them really good. So I recommend trying one out if you do any kind of work like this. Really handy. So let's take it for a test drive. Well, looks like we're in luck. The test drive went great. Doesn't seem like there's any leaks. It's a little bit hard to tell because there is some antifreeze that splashed out on the bottom and we drained the fluid. Uh, so we'll give it a day or two of driving it. I think we're good. So I hope this video was helpful if you have, need to do anything like this. Uh, if you have a different vehicle, the process is going to be fairly similar. Just your parts and pieces are going to look different and be bolted on a little bit different. But the, the procedure is basically the same for a lot of vehicles. So the only thing you want to do is make sure you dispose of your antifreeze properly. Don't just drain it on the ground. Um, it, it can be poisonous to animals and pets and things. Um, so make sure you dispose of it properly and uh, work safe. Some of the sealants I used for this job was uh, this little tube of Permatex. It's a water pump and thermostat housing RTV sealant. I used to buy these in really big tubes because I was doing a lot of this kind of work for a while. But I don't do it that often. So they had this little tube at the auto parts store and uh, worked out perfect. For the thread sealant, I also used a Permatex uh, high temperature thread sealant. Um, comes in this little tube. Again, I don't need a big tube. Um, for the most part, it's just going to sit in my toolbox. So again, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at HomeBuiltShop. So thanks for watching. Huh. It doesn't start without keys. Now where did I put them? Installation is exactly the same as removal, except that it's hot now. Ow.